I want to, I want to remind all the honorable members that um, I, um, I was elected as an independent candidate. Why I bring that up is because I did not have the luxury of having a national manifesto. But I read both manifestos from Kenya Kwanzaa and from Azimio. Both manifestos agreed on the need for housing. They agreed that it is a fundamental human right. They agreed on the rate of population growth and the migration to the urban centers. And they agreed that in Kenya we require approximately 250,000 new units per year. So there are two things that we must recognize from this fact. Kenyans agree that there's a need for housing. The question is on how this is going to be implemented. I also happened to be in the housing committee and we went around the country and I must say that must have been the most advanced public participation exercise I have seen. Kenyans agree that there's a need for housing. The place where there's divergence is on several issues which can be cured and are already being cured by amendments to this particular bill. First, the first issue was the, um, the affordability of these houses. And most Kenyans really lamented on the fact that there was a deposit that was required to actually get access to the particular houses. That has already been cured in the amendments. And that's why I beg honorable members to please go through the committee report because most of the issues that are being raised today have been addressed in that report. Most of the other issues on allocation of the units, fairness in allocation, and job creation have been cured again with amendments. How have these been cured? It is by ensuring that wherever these units are constructed, they benefit that local community. All those things have been addressed by amendments based on the public participation exercise that was carried out by the joint committee. I think the issue that arises for most people are purely speculative. Why I say that is that in Kenya we have a culture of public funds being stolen. But I think, Madam Speaker, we have to get to a point as a country where we have faith that some development is actually going to happen. Otherwise, we will remain in the same state because we are now 60 years after independence. We have not been able to achieve Article 43 of the Constitution and assuring Kenyans live in dignity. It is about time that as a house we rise up and support to ensure that at least within the 13th Parliament, some of the things we support we can be proud later on and say we have eradicated, eradicated some of the issues that have persisted since before some of us were born. The purpose of this particular bill, even though it's tackling only housing, some people are saying we should ensure first of all that people have adequate food, people have jobs. But in terms of social and economic rights, they must all be achieved simultaneously. We cannot say since not everybody has a house, then they don't go to school because everybody, all our children need to go to school. Education is also a socioeconomic right. And therefore we must strive and achieve all those rights at the same time. So we are already 60 years too late, Madam Speaker.